Indeed, what is a man that you are mindful of him? There is nothing worthy in us, O God. And yet, you gave your son. You gave Jesus for us. We will continue to praise him. We will continue to exalt his name. Praise his grateful of what Jesus has done on that cross and our hearts are filled with joy and thanksgiving knowing 
that He is forever faithful. Now, in the past and forever, He will never change for He is the God of mercy and grace. Hallelujah. We will praise Your name. We will just continue to thank You for what You have done on the cross. Your praise, oh God. 
praise. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Praise the name of God. Indeed, we are thankful for what you have done on the cross. And we are being thankful for your presence this morning. All glory, praises, and thanks to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now be seated. Mic check, okay. Um, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, truly, it's a blessed morning today. Thank you, Tita. Um, we're gonna offer a song to the Lord, and this song is based on Psalm 91. And this psalm is filled with so much promises that from God that lifts our eyes above our trials, our circumstances, to see His attributes his character to see his providential wise and powerful care nga dilita niya pasagdaan kita nga mga anak um, in verse uh, verses 1 and 2 he the psalmist says he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty i will say to the lord my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust and even sa atong mga situation nga kanang in our seasons, uh, valley seasons, mga highs and lows, the most important thing, what matters most, is what the Lord has done on the cross. These promises, um, we, we, this promise that the Lord has said is trustworthy because we have a faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who endured on the cross against our sin. And was raised to eternal glory for our salvation. And as we offer this song of worship to the Lord, it's our prayer to nga. Today, all of us, kanang, you could sing with us and may you be encouraged, not only by this song, but what God has said in, the, in Psalm 91. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. Will be my hideaway. 
Pakoy sound, hallelujah, salamat sa gino. Christ is my hideaway. No? So, ingo ni ginong Isos, come to me, all of you who are tired and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. And indeed, Jesus Christ is our hideaway. And we have a couple of announcements. Uh, we will be having our couples fellowship this coming Saturday. So, do na mo mga a friend, no? Nga kaila, invite them. Invite them to join the couples fellowship this coming Saturday at do sa Madayao, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, alas do sa hapon. So, bring a friend with you. And ang youth, just a rem reminder is nga ang youth pagahimoo na every Sunday din ni sa sanctuary from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Osbun nako ang youth fellowship pagahimoo diri na sa sanctuary from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. But for today, for today ang youth ninyo karon lang. Kaya ang mushare at duman sa balay, so it would be online. But as of this time, ang tanan nga activity sa youth will be held there is a sanctuary every Sunday. Uh, except lamang o dunay mga special cases, just like uh, karon nga Domingo. Uh, at to i ang mushare at doman sa online so for to, for this Sunday it would be online and kantong why Biblia once again last Sunday naghatag ni og Biblia pero inyong gibilin ang kantong among gihatag gihatag na gito siya ayaw gibilin now we have Bibles Dito sa Luyok, in Saiway, mga Biblia. Once again, you can pick up Bibles and that would be yours. Pagkuha mong Biblia, tantong wala yung mga Biblia. So, we have Bibles. 
And also, uh, do not I gitawag na mercy fund, no? Mercy fund. Ang mercy fund mga igsoon, mga sinsiyo ni siya sa inyo mga bulsa. Uh, piso, singko. Na kita mo anang gikuan sa lamisa. Og ato nang gigamit ang mercy fund ngadto sa mga kaigsoonan nga kinahanglan yung tabangan. Si for example, ang hagbong basig nanginahanglan na na siya og mukupot. And si for example, ang atong igsoon lorito na sunugan. Nasunugan sila. And of course, they need help. And that comes from the mercy fund. So, unya ini kahuman ninyo na adito ang mga igsoon sa lamisa. Smiling kay na sila kanunay. Kay naghuwat pud na siya sa atong katong sa building fund na to. And praise the Lord. And pagkahuman sa fellowship ang mga leaders, we have a meeting. Amen. So, we will continue now our series of study of the God who saves. And that is from chapter 9 of the book of Romans up to chapter 11. Mauna atong series of study. And we're almost finished. In fact, we are now in the first part of chapter 11. We just finished chapter 10. So, nahuman na sa chapter 9, chapter 10, og arita na po sa chapter 11. Mauna ang tuluk at chapter sa atong series the God who saves. And for this morning, we will be studying verse 1 to verse 10. And as we read this passage of scriptures, I want that everybody will stand up as we read these verses. Og akuning basahon sa Nasbi version. Whatever version nga naanimo. Ang pinakanindot nga version sa Biblia kanang version nga gibasa. Once again, kanang Bible nga gibasa mo na pinakanindot nga version. Okay, let's read. Book of Romans chapter 11 verse 1 to verse 10. I say then, God has not rejected this people, has He? Far from it. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And God has not rejected His people whom He foreknew. Or do you not know what the Scripture says and the passage about Elijah? How He pleads with God against Israel. Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have torn down your altars. And I alone am left. They are seeking my life. But what is the divine response to him? I have gave for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. In the same way then, there has also come to be at present a remnant according to God's gracious choice. But if it is by grace, it is no longer based on works. Since otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Verse 7. What then? What Israel is seeking, it has not obtained. But those who were chosen obtained it, and the rest were hardened, just as it is written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes to see not, ears to hear not, down to this very day. Verse 9. And David says, May their table become as near and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a retribution to them. Last verse. May their eyes be darkened to see not, and bend their backs continually. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God. 
We thank you for today. Another Sunday, you know. Ngayon mong gilugway sa matag-usa ka na mo. Salamat sa nga nang labay mga adlaw, Lord. Nang labay ng simana, nang labay ng bulan, nang labay ng katuigan. A lot of time, O oh God, napakyas kami diya kanimo, but you remain faithful. Even this very day, Lord, sa among pagtaon, O oh God, sa book of Romans, especially now in Romans 11, open our heart and mind, illumine our mind, Lord, not just to understand, but to walk according to your will. Father, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sit down, my son. Hallelujah. Pwede i focus sa electric foundry sa kwan. Thank you. Thanks. At chapter 11 concludes the three chapters 9, 10, and 11. And it talks about the future transaction of God to Israel. And the big issue Paul was dealing is that God had not rejected his people, Israel. What you did, in spite of a guy stubborn, hard headed, what you Biyai or pasagdi sa ginoo ang Israel. The same with you and I. We're so stubborn. But God is faithful to us. Amen? And the theme will carry throughout the entire chapter. And one of the important images in this chapter, portraying Israel, the Gentiles, and the kingdom of God, is the olive tree. Magigamit during a picture as we go on on chapter 11. And many in Israel through the ages rejected God. Atumog Israel karon. Praise God, we've been, I've been in Israel. They're still waiting for their Messiah. Dili nila madawat na si Kristo Maoy manunobos. And the verses of scriptures that we will be studying today, this morning, can be divided into two segments from verse 10, 1 to verse 10. The first one is that Israel has not rejected by God. And that is verse 1 to verse 6. And the second one is in verse 7 to verse 10, understanding the hardening in the part of Israel. Kantong nagkupot sa PowerPoint, palihog kong update. Kaysa nag sa PowerPoint. Now, I entitled this study, The God Who Saves, Part 5. I see it again, the God who saves, part 5. And there are three pieces of evidence that indeed God has not rejected Israel. Here's the first one in verse 1. That Paul himself is the evidence that God did not reject Israel. Verse 1 it says, I say then, has God cast away His people? Certainly not. For I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, Paul is a living example or living proof that God had not rejected His people. Pangutana, kinsa man di si Pablo. And Paul's early life was what we called was marked by religious zeal or passion 
with his brutal violence and relentless persecution to the early church. Si Pablo usa ka mang lulutos sa Kristohanon. O diin doon, doon ay mga panagtigom at doon ni, ni Pablo. Iyang dakpon to the point, mga Igsoon, in the book of Acts, he approved for the killing of Stephen. Fortunately, in the later year of Paul's life, he chose a marked difference as he lived his life for Christ for the advancement of God's kingdom. Atong isgutan ang kinabuhi ni Pablo sa wa pa siya makristuhanon. At the age of 13, si Pablo gitudluan sa usa ka rabay nga ginganlan og Gamaliel. Wherein si Gamaliel nagtudlo kang Pablo about Jewish history, about Psalms, about the work of the prophets. Until Paul became a member of Sanhedrin. And this is what we call the Jewish Rolling Council. A 21 group of elite people in Israel. Ngaog sa ato, pamura ni silag mga sinador. No? So Paul became one of the Jewish Rolling Council. And he is not just a Sanhedrin, he is also a Pharisee. So to make the long story short, Paul is expert of religious law. Now in chapter 8 of the book of Acts, you will find out if you have to read the whole chapter, imong makitaan nga usa si Pablo sa nag-approve sa pagpatay kang Stephen by stoning to death. And Saul became determined to eradicate Christian. Maunay panlantaw ni Pablo, nga kining kristuhanon ako ning burahon sa Tagalog pa. Brutal in his pursuit as he believed that he was acting in the name of God. So ang iyang pagpatay sa mga Kristohanon during his time, in his own mindset, he is doing the will of God. And perhaps, there is no one more brutal than a religious terrorist. And that is what is happening now, especially when he believes that he is doing the will of God by killing innocent people. And this is exactly the life of Saul before he becomes a Christian, a religious terrorist. Paul persecuted the church and even some were put to death. I want you to open your Bible in book of Acts chapter 8 verse 3. Panahonin ni Pablo. This is what the Bible declares. He began ravaging the church, entering house to house, and dragging off men and women. He would put them in prison. In ani ang mindset ni Pablo, ngaw dunay mag Bible study iyaning at tuon. In fact, akong basahon sa binasaya in ani pagka historia. Nagtinguha gayod niya mawala ang mga magtutuo kang Kristo. This is the mindset of Paul. He will eradicate Christians. Busa, gibalay-balay niya sila. O gado, o gidala ngadto sa presuhan, lalaki man o babay. That is the life of Paul before he becomes are true believers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the game changer of Paul's life story is in book of Acts chapter 9. It's starting from verse 1 to verse 22. When he encountered our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the road of Damascus during his journey from Jerusalem to Damascus. 
he encountered Jesus. And from that moment on, thank you, Saul's life was torn upside down. Paul immediately went into synagogue and proclaimed Jesus as the Son of God. In fact, in the entire New Testament, Paul wrote 13 books of the New Testament. And it is being assumed that Paul died mortal death around 60 E.D. in Rome. So, question. What can we learn from the life of Apostle Paul? Mga Igson, Paul is a great example of Jew who was included in the number whom God has chosen to be his. Usasa si Pablo sa gipili nga mahimong iya in fact, og imong basahon ng Book of Acts chapter 9 nga sa giingnan ni Ginoong Hesus si Ananias nga dunay tawo gaginan lang Pablo ang poesya. Dili mo ampo si Ananias. Ning reason out si Ananias, Lord, dili na siya ngayon. Kay iyang gilutos ang imong katawhan. But Jesus says, no, I chose him. Nanong ni aman mo diri karon. Why? Because the Bible is crystal clear. Nag-ingon si Ginoong Isos, you did not chose me, but I chose you. And appointed you to go and bear fruit the fruit that will last forever. Amen? Di ba ang iyong pasalamatan ng ginoo na susama sa ni Pablo, gipili ka o gipili ko to be part of His kingdom one day. Amen? Every now and then, may nguntang, uh, there is life after death. We believe life after death. But we need to understand, brethren, that there is a life before death. And this is now. Why? Kay ang kinabuhing dayon, dili magsugod, inigkamatay ni mo. Now! Because you belong to the kingdom of God. Amen? There is a light before death only in Jesus Christ. Maunay giingoni Dr. Edmund Chan the greatest tragedy in life is not death but without Christ. Maunay pinakapait nga kinabuhi dili ang kamatayon apan nga magkinabuhi nga way Kristo. Amen? Just like Paul, God intervened in his path of destruction when he encountered Jesus Christ and he was put on the true path to God. And by grace, Paul was saved from life of works righteousness into the life of faith. Nga naman, kay ang pagtu ni Pablo sa wapa siya makristuhanon, maluwas siya pinagi sa iyang mayong buhat, pagsunod sa balaod. But the Bible declares, we are saved by grace. We are justified by faith in Christ. And the Bible declares that we have peace with God only through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is the first evidence that God did not abandon His people in the life of Paul. The second evidence is in the life of Elijah in verse 2 to verse 4. Let's go to verse 1, verse 4. God has not rejected His people 
whom he foreknew? Or do you not know what the scripture says in the passage of Elijah? How he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have torn down your altars and I alone am left. And they are seeking my life. But what is the divine response to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed their knee to Baal. Now Paul reminds Israel of God's sovereignty and calling by quoting the passage in the story of 1 Kings chapter 19. But we need to understand before chapter 19, dunay dako kay nahitabo sa chapter 18. Before ang 19. Now, if you will read your Bible in 1 Kings chapter 18, you will find out na si Elijah nakigtigi or nakigkumpit ng to sa unsaman, the prophet of Baal. So mga, sa mga pagan prophet or sa mga diyos-diyos, iyang gihagit ang mga pagan, ang mga Baal prophet, iyang gingnan, now, maghalad ta. Atong tanahon o kinsa gyud ang Dios nga tinuod. If you will read 1 King chapter 18. Now to make the long story short, naghalad sila. O nya gihagit ni Elijah ang mga Baal prophet. Now, go, kamoy una. O nya naghalad sila. Nagampo. O nya ingon ni Elijah, oy, may may nahitabo sa inyong Ginoo. Basig na to ang inyo gino. Hala, himo agi kaduha. Nagampo na po ng mga propeta o the Baal prophet. Wa gihapoy na himo. Gibugal-bugalan sila ni Elijah. To the point nga nagsamad-samad sila sa ilang lawas. But what happened? Nothing. Then ni Elijah Ako na po. And I will show you that indeed my God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And this is also the God that we are serving. When Elijah offered and prayed, then the fire comes out. Gitubag sa ginoo and then, gipamatay nila ang mga Baal prophets. Ipangpatay. Now, what happened mga igsoon? Pagkahuman sa maong hitabo, ning abot ang chapter 9, 19. Ning sumbong si Ahab kang Jezebel. Nagpada si Jezebel o messenger nga to kang Elijah. In spite sa gihimo sa ginoo, nahadlok si Elijah o ning karitilog dagan. Ning dagan siya mga ison. Nahadlok siya kang Jezebel in spite sa gihimo ng milagro sa ginoo sa iyang kinabuhi. And look at the complaint ni Elijah. He complained that God had given his people and only him was left. Tanawa ninyo ang inyong Biblia. Kung sa'y kumpli niya. 1 Kings 19, verse 10. 1 Kings 19, verse 10. Morning kumpli ni Elijah. Elijah replied, I have jealously served the Lord Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you. Turn down your altars and kill every one of your prophets. I am what? Only one left. Akuray na bilin. And now they are trying to kill me too. But look at this. God told Elijah that he was not alone. Nga doon pa gibilin ang ginoong remnant. 7,000 nga yung gibilin. In 2 Kings 19, verse 18, it says, 
I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kiss him. God has his remnant even during persecution, mga egsoong. Do na ibilin ang gino, even in the ministry, nagtuo ka nga ikaw ra. No, you're not alone. There is always a remnant na ibilin ang gino. Magtanaw ka sa imong kagilingon, murag ako raman, siguro kanunay ini. No, you're not alone. Because God knows His business. Just like Elijah, nga sa tanaw niya, murag ako naman ang kanunay ini, gipamantay ng uban, tago siya, ning karitil siya, in spite of all miracles, kaghimo sa gino, ning dagan siya kang Jezebel, hadlok siya sa babae. But God says, you're wrong. Doon ako'y gibilin nga tinuuray nagsimba ka na ka. Egzon ang, ang Pilipinas gitawag o Christian country. But I do believe dako ura ang 10% na tinuuray nga nagtuo kang Kristo. Amen? There is always a remnant. And this is to remind Israel that even when they wandered from God, He never left them. His watchful eyes is always with them. I remember the promise in book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. The Bible declares, be content of what you have. For never I will leave you. Never I will forsake you. And that is the promise of God. The promise of God in the Old Testament is the same. Nanuman, ingon sa Biblia, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God promised to Elijah, He's also give us a promise. Ingon sa Biblia, be content, for I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen? Now let's go to the third evidence. The remnant, say by grace, not by works, in verse 5 to verse 6. Let's go to verse 5. In the same way, there has also come to be at present a remnant according to God's gracious choice. Paul is making the case that God has not rejected Israel as his people. It is God. Remember this. It is God who chose Israel to be the channel of the Messiah. Gipili sa ginoo ang Israel nga ato yun ipanganak, ato ipakatao ang manunubos. Why not Philippines? Why not America? Why not Germany? Or why not England? Why, Misa? why Israel? And that is what we call the sovereignty of God. Kabubuton sa ginoo. This choice is not determined by how good or how faithful Israel would be or how many good works they were to do. It was a sovereign choice of God and is based on His grace alone. Dealing ang mga Israelita tungod silang mga mayong buhat. Why? Because the Bible declares Sa wa pa sila muhimo og maayo og dautan gipili na sila sa Ginoo. In book of Ephesians chapter 1 it says, "We are being chosen by God even before the foundation of the earth." In book of Romans it says, "I love Jacob, I hate Esau." That is the sovereignty of God. And we cannot we don't have a right to ask God, "Gano man Lord, why?" Well, praise the Lord. Mausaka o gusako sa gipili sa ginoo. And this remnant of Israel, they will remain faithful to God 
by faith in Jesus Christ. And remember this, if there's a remnant in the time of Paul, and there's a remnant in the time of Elijah, there will be a remnant even today. Amen? Nanoman, it is God who proclaims. And Paul proclaims that this remnant has been chosen by God by grace. And grace is not connected to any good works. It is always connected only to God. Amen? Grace is only connected to God, not by any good works. And this remnant will exist because they are the work of God and they will continue to exist. Even today. Sa nag, dito pa ko sa kadagatan sa una mga egsoon, nagwali ko sa radyo. And one of the listeners during the time, usa siya ka uh, Indian, but British citizen. British siya nga. Indian, British Indian. Siman po siya, naminaw siya sa wali. And then, pagka humana ko wali, ingon niya, is it possible for me to request a prayer for you? Ko, yes, why not? Ingon niya, please pray for United Kingdom. Ko, so, specifically, what do you want me to pray? That the remnant in United Kingdom will be remain faithful because as of now, maybe, morning word, Yankee quote, maybe 5% ang nabilin na tinuuray ng Kristo. 5% mga egsan. Imagina ninyo nga ang mga missionaries, mga reformists, Gikan ditong dapita. Martin Luther from Germany. John Wycliffe, George Mueller, all those, John Wesley, gipang basa na ang ilang libro, gipang gamit na as materials. But now, look at United Kingdom and Germany. 5% ang Kristohanon. Di na lang tamulayo, muato ta sa Turkey. Ang Turkey ang nagwali during the time si Pablo ang nagwali, si Timothy ang nagwali. In fact, even John nagwali sa Turkey, mga egsoon. Ang gitawag na itong Ephesus, Laodicea. Those places. Pero pag anto na mo, praise the Lord, 2017, mga egsoon, more than 1% ang Christian dito. Can you imagine, out of 100, usa na lang kabuk ang Kristohanan. And my question is, is it possible nga kanang butang nga mahitabo sa Pilipinas? Yes. O ikaw o ako, dili mahimong matinod anon sa pagwali sa pulong sa ginoo. Amen? Remember last Sunday ang atong itonan? Faith comes from what? Hearing the message. And the message heard through the word of Christ. But the question is, how can they hear if someone will not preach? So somebody ang muwali nga to nila and no other than it is you and I. Amen? It is you and I. The remnant exists. Because they are the work of God and they will continue to exist. Hallelujah. Look at verse 6. But if it is by grace, it is no longer based on works. Since otherwise, grace no longer grace. Although the vast majority of Israelites rejected God and they were still trying to receive God's righteousness by following the law. But Paul insists 
that a remnant of Israelites still in Christ. In fact, he wrote in the previous verse, in verse 5, he goes to verse 5, God has chosen them for Himself by grace. Gipili sa ginokinning remnant of Israel. And now Paul tried to restate what grace means. Unsa mabuti pasabot good sa grasya, gibalik-balik din nato. Grace means receiving an unearned gift. Sa ato pa kay unearned man siya, it is what? You don't need to pay for that. It is free. Ang imong himuon is what? Receive the gift of eternal life, which is only through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace is something freely given to the undeserving people like you and I. Kisa may deserving luason ko no dere, taas kamot. Nobody. Why? Because the Bible is clear. For no one is righteous and not even one. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Verse 11, no one seeks God. Why nangita gigno? Manang mo ka, pastor, ako nangita gino, you're lying. Why nangita gino na to? Ang ginoo ang nangita na to. Amen? And that is Christianity. Ang religion, ang tao nangita gino. Mauna mo, himo siya pamaagi. But Christianity, ang ginoo nangita o tao. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. If our hope for eternal salvation is resting on our work that we have done, then we have not received it freely from God's gracious hand. And what Paul is saying is that good work could not contribute to salvation. Otherwise, even yeah, grace would not be grace. Kaya ang imong mga buhat makakontribute o kaluwasan din, it's not grace. It's a product of work. Muna yung niya, grace would not be grace if your good work can contribute salvation. And God's way of salvation is always grace. Amen? Therefore, Work have zero. Zero part to play in securing salvation. Now let's go to the second part, verse 7 to verse 10. Understanding the hardening in the part of Israel. Verse 7, it says, What then? What Israel is seeking? It has not obtained, but those who were chosen obtain it. And the rest were hardened. Now Israel has not obtained what it seeks. Why did nila magkabot? Ngano man mga ison? Nganong wa nila magkabot ang ilang gipangita? Why? Because ang ilang pagpangita sa ilang pamagi. Ang ilang pamagi is that they pursued the law for justification. Ang ilang mindset is that sa maayong buhat maluwas sila. Now in Book of Romans chapter 9 verse 31, open your Bible. Book of Romans chapter 9 31, it says, But Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Gisumpayan. Because they did not seek it by faith but by the works of the Lord. That's the problem. Ang pamaagi sa gino only by faith. Ang ilang pamaagi, works of the law. By the law of Moses. So nag-abot sila, wa. Ingon ni Pablo, di yun ni mag-abot. Kayang balaod sa gino, by faith. O ang inyong balaod, ang inyong gihimo, by works. And verse 7 continue. Ingon sa verse 7. But the elect, which means the believers have obtained it. The elect, kinsa man ang elect, kagisgutan diri sa atong gibasa, the Jews, the remnant, who accepted the grace principle for salvation. Grace always comes 
to the believer of the cross. And God's plan of salvation absolutely and efficiently because of the grace principle of salvation which is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And by grace principle of salvation, it is Jesus did all the doing mga ison. Si Cristo ang naghimo sa tanan. So there's no need for us to do anything and that's the good thing. That's a good thing of God's plan for salvation kay siya ang nihimo sa tanan. Wa kay himoon. Eh usa ka nagingon, pastor do na ko gihimo oi. Eh. Unsa may imong gihimo barad? Ang akong pagtuo, dili na ako mining dawat. Ug imong tanaon tuod, murag do na kay gihimo no? Kay ako mining dawat. Ako mining dawat pastor so do na ko ipark. But watch this. Listen to this verse. In book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. Kinsay author sa mong pagto, it is Christ. Manya, we try to rationalize. Pero pastor, do na yung ko igihimo. Nga naman, kay ang pagdawat, iya di agi po sige, no, siya yung author. Pero ako may dawat. Okay. I want you to open your Bible in the book of Philippians. And the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. I want you to read your Bible. It is God who works in you. Diyan sa pagingon sa Biblia. Both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Nganong din pili ka? Because it is God. Dili ni mo. Who is the author? It is God. So nakakain mo? Wow. It is all by the grace of God. Amen? Di ba ang ngayong palakpakan ang ginaw? Amen? Di ba in everything it is the work of God? And that is the principle of grace. We are undeserving to be saved. Now, let's go to verse 8. Just as the scriptures say, God made them so stupid. Ang akong gibasa dari mga ikson, contemporary English. Mona simply kayo nga pagka-English. Ingin niya. Just as the scripture says, God made them so stupid that their eyes are blind and their ears are still deaf. Basahon ako sa line niya version. Nasbi. Just as is, it is written, God gave them the spirit of stupor. Eyes to see not. Ears to hear not. Down to this very day. The inagikot di Pablo from book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 10. Now, ang verse 8 to verse 10 give a biblical support sa verse 7. Ningkuha si Pablo to look a versikulo. To look a versikulo to demonstrate the example of hardening of Israel against grace. Iyang gikot mga isoon from Book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 3 to verse 4 and book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 10. Notice the word just as it is written. Din managikan. That is from book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and book of Isaiah chapter 29. Just as it is written. Unsa may buti pasabot dari mga ison? The scriptures speaks to why some Israelites did not accept the grace principle. Nga naman, tanawa tariya, God has given them a spirit of what? Gitagaan ko na sila og spirit of stupor. Kaya nang lisod man ang stupor, pastor? Sabot, pasabot, ana. Akong gipangita ang synonym sa word stupor, dullness, numbness, kaya bang, kaya nang, Nam, murabag, murabag. And other word, doon na pagibutan dito kuma. Sa ito pa murag, 
buhing patay. No? Ang imong kasing-kasing buhing patay. Ning nam siya so why why function? Or in other word, spiritual coldness or lukewarmness. So hardening of heart involves spiritual stupor, dullness, lukewarmness or coldness. Mao na sa usa ka version gigamit dito ang ingon dito nga God made them so stupid. Dili stupor ang gigamit, so stupid. And then gi God made them so stupid that their eyes are blind and their ears are still deaf. Nga naman, gipagahi ang ilang kasing-kasing. Israel did not respond to God's offer of salvation by grace because of their stupor, dullness, numbness of their heart. Gipagahi nila ang ilang kasing-kasing. If we recall, during the time of Moses in book of Exodus, in Exodus chapter 8, ingon sa Biblia, Pero hardened his heart. In book of Exodus chapter 9, it continues, Pero hardened his heart. But in book of Exodus chapter 10, God hardened the heart of Pero. Nga huwag magpadayon ta o paggahi sa itong kasing-kasing to the point nga paghahiyo na sa gino. Amen? Look at book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Og miingon si Stephen sa mga tao dito sa korte. Pagkagahi gayod sa inyong mga ulo. Look at this word. Pagkagahi sa inyo mga ulo, nagapabungol-bungol lamang kamu. Ingnan na yung tapad ay pagbungol-bungol. Amen. Ayaw ko no pagpabungol-bungol. Ingnan niya, nagpabungol-bungol lamang kamu sa mga minsahe sa Diyos. Tungod kay dili niyo gusto nga mutuman sa iyang giingon kaninyo. Kanunay ninyong sup pakon ang espiritu sama gayod kamo sa inyong mga katigulangan spirit of stupor spirit of what pabungul-bungul numbness spiritual coldness spiritual lukewarmness and verse 8 continues it says god made them so stupid their eyes are blind and their ears are still deaf the blindness and deepness result of what we call spirit of stupor. Dullness or coldness. My son, ayaw pa bungol-bungol. Amen? E nangin mong kagalingon, di ko bungol. Praise the Lord. Abin ninyo, doon ako igsoon nga amang o bungol. Ingon sa tao, amang ko nag bungol. Pagsugod pa ining iglesia sa living word, you will surprise. Amang ko nung siya bungol, pero may maintenance sa sound system. May mo sound check. Siya tanan ang muhimo. Nga naman, sa wapa tumaborn again ang akong igsoon, nga amang og bungol, palahubog kayo. Imagina, amang pa, bungol pa, palahubog. Pero doon ay gihibo ang gino. Gani, o di sa ganahan ng pagkaon, ilabay. Di sa ganahan ng kanon, bahaw. Di sa ganahan na. Luoy kay nga kong sawa, kaysa may nabilin. Dahil sa kabutang, gihimo sa gino, gikuyog siya sa youth camp. Youth camp for three days, mga ikson. After the youth camp, pag uli niya, tapulan kayo ito. Mumata, alas nabi, mukaon. Motihimoon, paggikan sa youth camp, ang among mga anak gagmay pa, masuko na siya o magkaon ka ng mag, mag, maglamog-lamog ang plato. Di sa ganahan, magkaon ka ka ng isaktora. O niya, tapulan nga tao, pero paggikan sa youth camp, o mulimpyo, lindot kay nga pagkalimpyo. 
Ya naon dia mga katabang ha? Ikaw ikis ka, ikis ka. Hmm. Di ka kamao mo limpyo. You see ang tao nga usbon sa Ginoo? Gikan sa tapulan, mulihok na siya. Now, miraculously, siya yung maintenance sa sound system. Mau nga ako, karon din ako mutuog, taong bungol. Kay physically, doon naman ko ikso, nga gingan, nga amang o bungol. Nga nung makabati man suwali. Kay nga naman, kay wa magpabungol-bungol. Amen? So, ayaw mo pabungol-bungol dia, kay di ko mutuog bungol. Amen. Amen. God made them stupid. Ingon sa Biblia. And blindness and deafness are the result of what we call spirit of stupor, spirit of dullness, spirit of coldness, all those things. And most people in our day embrace of what we call the spirit of stupor. And there's one thing you need to understand that Satan is the author of what we call spirit of dullness. Ang yawa mo'y utura na. Kada di kaganahan mo basas Biblia, di kaganahan mo ampo. Sugun so, kasi mo ginikanan mo ora, pero nagsigya po kagduwa, si Satanas ang utura na. I want you to open your Bible to prove that indeed, ang yawa mo'y utura na. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 it says Dili sila mo to sa mayong balita tungod kay ang ilang mga huna-huna gibutaan watch this gibutaan ni Satanas nga mao ang nagpakadius dining kalibutan na gibutaan niya sila aron dili makakita sa kahayag sa mayong balita bahin sa gahom ni Kristo na siya maugayod ang hulagway sa Diyos. You see? Ang mga tao karon muto gino. Pero basahan ni mo Biblia, mo inuna na, ay, nanatang Bible, Bible, basta muto gino gino. How in the world that you will believe in God without the Word of God? Unsay tawa ka na, Spirit of what? Stupor. They are blinded by Satan. Giduwa-duwa ng ilang una-una. Nga ang reliyon mo na'y tinood. Pamino lang. Sige, sabat-sabat, bahalagway, sabot-sabot. That is okay. No problem. Sabat-sabat ka diya. Why sabtanay? That is not a problem. And the author of that thing, the Bible says, is Satan. Aron dili sila makakita sa kahayag sa maayong balita bahin sa gahom ni Kristo na siya maugayod ang hulagway sa Diyos. Hallelujah. The problem for the non-believers is a negative attitude towards the gospel of grace. And it's not misunderstanding of it. Kag mo basa sila sa Biblia, masamtan, it's a simple. But the only thing is dili man sila mo basa. Mo na nga ikaw ga ko gis gi, gisugo sa Ginoo to what? To preach the good news, not to convert, but to preach the good news. As what we studied last Sunday, we need to preach the gospel. Darkness is a mind shut down to the will of God. Amen. A panigsoon bisa man unsa ka itum sa imong kinabuhi. God is willing to save just like Paul and just like you and I giyon sa pagluwa si Pablo sa Ginoo og nganong giluwa si Pablo here's the reason I want you to open your bible in book of acts chapter 26 verse 17 to 18 ingon ni Pablo ingon ni Ginoo ang Hesus kang Pablo luwason ko ikaw gikan sa mga Hudyo padtuon ko ikaw kanila Aron pagbukas sa ilang mga mata, aron mubiya sila gikan sa kangit-ngit, ngadto sa kahayag, gikan sa gahom, sa yawa, muduol sila sa Diyos. And that's the reason nga giluwas po kas gino. Remember, the same God ang nagluwas kang Pablo. 
Ingon sa Biblia, luwason ko ikaw, aron ikaw ang akong gamiton, nga kining mga tawhanan, nga naulipon sa ilang pagkas, sa pagkamakasasa, imo silang dadon, gikan sa gahom sa kangit-ngit, nga sa kahayag, sa gahom sa yawa, nga sa Diyos. In Ezekiel chapter 33, ingon sa Biblia, you will be unsearable o kining mga tawhana, mga matay, nga dili makabati sa akong pulong. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 9. Then David said, Turn their mills into bait for a trap so that they will stumble and begin and given what they deserve. Ako nang gigamit ang contemporary English version. Okay, more simple ang English. Then David said, Turn their mills into bait for a trap so that they will stumble and be given what they deserve. They nigi quote ni Pablo from Psalm chapter 69, verse 22 to verse 23. And Psalm 69 is Messianic Psalm. Nganong gitawag maning Messianic Psalm mga igsoon? This Psalm predicted that the source of blessings of Israel, which is Jesus Christ, become a stumbling block for them. And indeed, the Messiah Christ had become a stumbling block to the majority of the Israelites. And Israelites' rejection of God's truth become a problem. Mona pinakadako nilang problema. And remember this, rejection of God's truth is a serious matter. And it is liable act. If you will deny the truth, mga on that is rebellion against God. Amen? And verse 10 it says, Let their eyes be darkened, so that they do not see, and bow down their back always. Listen to the first phrase, Let their eyes be darkened. Why would God do this to His chosen people? Nga nung gihimo man eh, sa ginoo. Why? Because Israel was disobedient child of God. And remember this, God had to discipline His people. Sigurado igsoon mo, so good kas di, mulikoy ka, bunalan yung kas gino. I want you to open your Bible this time for us to understand. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. In book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, this is what the Bible declares. Sa panahon na disiplinahon kita, dili kita malipay. Hinoon, maguol kita. Apan sa kaulahian, kaulahian, kini nga pagdisiplina, listen to this phrase, makahatag ka nato o kalinaw sa atong kinabuhi. Kay, pinaagi ni ini, matulid ang atong pamasasan. Now, I want you to ask you sa mga ginikanan by heart. Kinsay dili mo disiplina sa ilang anak. Taas ka mo. Wow. Nga mo disiplina ta? Ingon sa Biblia, aron matulid ang atong pamatasan. Israel as a nation was blinded to the truth. And they lost their capacity to accept God's grace in any sense. Maunang ingon sa Biblia, verse 10 continues, so that they do not see and bow down, bow down their backs always. Meaning, disaster is always predictable for those who will reject the principle of grace. If you will reject if you will continue to the state of what we call spiritual stupor or dullness or coldness or lukewarmness, you cannot discern the truth. Nakabantay mo ng mga, tu- mga tao nga Christian sa una, quote-unquote, and then, ninglikoy sa ginoo, and then, dili na mauwaw sa ilang gihimo, 
Ang sa gitawa ka na, spiritual stupor, they cannot discern the truth. Mugahi na ilang kasing-kasing, ilang gipagahi. In fact, gipicture ni ni Ginong Isos during the earthly ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Jesus says, the Israel was kalus in attitude towards the Messiah. They could not understand. They could understand either, but they refused to recognize the Savior. Ilang gipagahi ang ilang kasing-kasing. And the bad part is that ug padayo ni mong pagahion ang imong kasing-kasing musamot na nga pagahion sa Ginoo just like what happened to Pero Pero hardened his heart and then Pero hardened his heart and the next God hardened the heart of Pero Amen in conclusion in the fullness of time God turned Paul, the hardcore worker for self-righteousness, into the hardest worker in God's righteousness. Amen? In fullness of time, God turned Paul, the hardest worker of self-righteousness, into the hardest worker in God's righteousness. Exon, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And the Bible says, if you hear his word, harden not your heart, for today is the day of salvation. Amen? Let's all stand up and we will pray. Father in heaven, thank you, God. We thank you for reminding us, Lord, that the product of spirit of stupor is deafness and blindness, hardening of heart. Lord, nakakita ka sa matag kasing kasing ng kabuntagon, you know, Dayag ka ni mo ang tanan, Lord. Ania kami karon ginoong Diyos. Tungod kay usa kami sa ang imong gipili, ginoo. You did not. We did not choose you, Lord, but you chose us. Salamat sa matang kaigsuunan, ginoong Diyos. Thank you. Even doon karon sa mga onliners, ginoong Diyos. Lord, nakakita ka sa kondisyon sa among kasing-kasing ni mga orasan. Sa mga among nahimo, ginoong, sa among hunahuna, sa among mga pagpanulti, oh God, sa mga butanga, sa among pagpanglihok. All the iniquities, oh God, which is unpleasing into your sight, Father, we ask forgiveness. Sa ilua kami, ginoong Diyos. Tabangi kami, ginoong, ang makahumaning dagan sa lumba sa kinabuhi. Lagulaga kami gino, apuno sa kalipay. Huwag kami yung proteksyon magauban ka na mo, Ganyong Diyos. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lamb of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Happy Lord's Day and may God richly bless you all spiritually, physically, and financially for His glory. Amen. God bless you. Indeed, uh, we should harden not our hearts, Mike, so, no? uh, because if we do, it will, uh, we will just harden it even more. And we do not want that. We, do, we want to give the glory to God alone, knowing that he, what He has done on the cross for, uh, we want to Please, uh, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Savior. And that, that is what uh, we ought to do day by day. Let's sing this last song for the Lord.
gifts of grace that came to me at such a cost. Where you're bound to stop, conquered my boundless sin. Mercy's arms are open wide. My heart is filled with a thousand songs, proclaiming the glories of Calvary. With every breath, Lord, how I long to sing of Jesus who died.